Well, everybody, we got ourselves a great game upcoming, and the biggest reason why, Dak Prescott will be back versus the Detroit Lions, and at a home game that is at 1 o'clock. And I think that the biggest thing is, is that I think it was for uh, the betterment of the team you held Dak out for that Philadelphia game so that he's fully healthy, number one. But number two, you reintroduce him at home um, against both the Lions and Chicago Bears. Now, the big key for this game is getting him reacclimated. I understand that there are things you're going to have to do in this game and watch out for, which we'll get into, but I think... And not only this, I've said it in plenty of videos, in fact, the last couple as we were getting back on track to getting Dak, is this. The Dallas Cowboys have to stick to the formula that's working, number one. And number two, they need to be able to not get cocky in the play calling, i.e. Kellen Moore, with going pass happy. And it's not that I'm a, you know, you know me, I, I love, you know, being, you know, pass happy, but like, it, it has to make sense, right? If it's a situation where that's the only thing that's working, then you got to go with it. But what I think the biggest element that the Cowboys have been missing is that we are just begging for our offense to do the bare minimum so that our defense can hold the fort down. And a clear indication of how these games could have gone was what happened with Philadelphia was that if you got behind, it's going to be hella tough for you to come back and then, God forbid, the other team scores, you're pretty much screwed. And that really reared its ugly head in Philadelphia. Now... Moving on from that game, I think you're getting a guy in Dak that, well, statistically speaking, he plays well at home. And I think that this is good because, you know, you're getting him back in his element. So then um, when you get to the bye week, it gets more time for him to get back into motion because then you have two big games after the bye week. But again, that's down the road. But that's the goal. That's the stretch goal here is Dak Prescott needs to be playing at a good level for your offense to be above average to that top level of the pack. And, you know, that's what we're looking for. Um, your offensive line, I think, has been doing well, all things considered. I think you have a running attack that you're, you, you know, I mean, oh my God, Zeke had 6.1 yards per carry. I can't even get the words out because of how amazed I was with how well the Dallas Cowboys handled the Philadelphia front seven in the latter half of the game. Now, I, I think that when you go to a game like Detroit, Detroit is 1-4, but they are a 1-4 team that is sneaky good, okay? They have put up a decent amount of points. They have a solid defense. It's just the ball hasn't bounced their way. Now, I've already been seeing individuals try to claim that we're going to get upset by Detroit, which is a huge possibility. I think that Detroit has nothing to lose in this game, but at the same time, um, for the Cowboys, the pressure is on them. They are a touchdown favorite at home, and they're getting Dak back. Now, again, we could be just doing this worry for nothing, but, I mean, when you, the, when you went to New England, that being Detroit, and you lose in the fashion you did, that's pretty embarrassing, so... Uh, there's that, but also Detroit tends to play the um, the Cowboys tough historically, especially of recent, so that's something you want to keep in mind as well in this game. I'm not expecting this to be a like easy game at all. I could be wrong. Like the, the Cowboys could blow out Detroit for all I know, but that's not the point here. The point is, is that Dallas has to go out and show up, and even if they lose this game, right, I, I want to make this emphatically clear. Of course how they lose the game is going to matter. If you lose this game... And it's because of certain parameters. That's what we'll discuss. But I think the biggest thing is, and the biggest end goal, is you cannot lose this game if you're trying to, number one, stack NFC wins, but want to keep pace with Philadelphia. That's number one. But number two, like, if you lose this game, but we see signs of, like, okay, like, you know, something's good here, 
we can move on. Okay, fine. Like, but the thing is, is I look at this um, Lions team and I say to myself, you should be able to beat this team. I think that you got to remember they got Jared Goff under center who I think, I listen, the game plan has been the same every single damn week. And I think the Cowboys, that's their formula. Stop the run. Force the tr- well on offense. This is a key thing too. Score first, stop the run, force Jared Goff to beat you. Now he has definitely been solid for Detroit this year. I won't lie, but I just don't see how if you look at the roster that Detroit puts out, I don't see a way that um. Not that I don't see a way that Dallas can lose. It's more so, I think that if you look at this game, you you kind of believe that the Cowboys, with how they've been handling things, should be able to take care of business. Like, that's what we want to see. And, um, you know, and I'm looking at some of these notes here, and I think that the real thing is, is that um, you continue to stay healthy. You continue to uh, put pieces together. And I think that, you getting to win five before the bye week is huge because I have said this. Now, before, I did pick the Cowboys. I think I picked them to beat. No, I picked them to lose to Detroit and then beat Chicago. Um, uh, so I had them going into the bye week at four and four. With that being said, they've already reached four wins. So right now they're at my expectation for the team. And I think that, and that was with a healthy Dak Prescott. If they win this game, they exceed my expectations and have an opportunity to move forward with that. But I think that's really the next question is, okay, what do the Cowboys do next? Is it that they go into these next two games, they handle business? And I, and the reason I lump these two together is because I really think that this is your springboard. Uh, get yourself ready for the later stretch because this was the hardest part. You just got through, well, if you throw in Detroit, and Chicago, once you had the bye week, that was your strongest start of the schedule, right? You went through that gauntlet. You came out 4-2, and two, which without Dak Prescott and the resiliency you had besides the Tampa Bay game is great. Um, but when you think about the, the stretch that matters in November and December... These are the games that you need to take advantage of because you're in a wild card um, race situation, you know. Um, and this is when we start having conversations about, okay, um, we need to get to the wild card. How are we going to do that? And not that how are we going to do that, but what's the path that we need to do? And I think that for the Cowboys, take this one week at a time. Oh, Space Cowboy, didn't you just mention these? Yes, of course, because you have to keep things holistically in the sense of how you look at them. But getting to 5-2 and two is the goal here, and the way to do it in the most important part, and a lot of people are going to be looking at this, how does Dak Prescott look when he returns under center for Dallas? Does he look solid? Is he rusty? Um, he might be, and we don't know because uh, we've seen instances where Rust was a factor, or was not. I mean, last year is a prime example. The dude threw three touchdowns, 400 yards, and, you know, he didn't play any preseason games, or he didn't really have any training camp reps. Um, now, I will say that there, and, and I want to speak on this because this is really something that I've been seeing a lot, and that kind of impacts how we're looking at um, this game in moving forward I see a lot of fans um, either panicking about the loss or rather there are some other fans that look at the team not our fans that think that the Cowboys are dead to right and they're not gonna do anything guys I want to reassure you that this is like an optimistic space Cowboy which you usually don't get if you made it this far into the video number one the Dallas Cowboys, okay, have shown you resiliency. I mean, I don't give a damn what anybody says, but the Cowboys could have won that game when they spotted the Eagles um, 13 points. 
I thought it was 10. They spotted them 13 points. And so if you want to be honest, you, they spotted them 20 points with the mistakes they've made. So they put this insurmountable lead in front of them that they nearly came back from. They just didn't have enough time and they couldn't make one last stop. And otherwise, they've been doing their thing. Now, you're not going to win every game, so that's okay with me. Is that excusing the poor performance we had? Absolutely not. But I want to re reassure people. We are in October. We're just about getting to the end of October, which is crazy how fast this year is going by. When the NFL plays, or when the NFL football and um, any sport is on, like time goes by a lot quicker now that the NBA is back. I really do think that you have a stretch run that you can go on, and that's what's going to matter. I do not care how you get to the postseason. Is that me lowering my expectations? No. Why? Because winning the division or getting a wild card spot is not my end goal. My end goal, as I've stated in the beginning of the season, is that I want to see this team win a playoff game, regardless of if it's at home or on the road. You have to do something. Now, um, a fun fact that I did not mention in the previous, I don't think I did, was that I do believe you could be see, seeing a, a situation where you play whoever wins the division or one of your rivals twice, uh, well, another time outside of the two we play with them usually. Um, but there is still plenty of season to go. And I mean, we saw it last year. You had an 8-0 team finish 11-6. and I've seen teams start 11-0 and and finish 12-4. and I've it, It's just, I've seen many things happen. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen to us or any of these other teams. But again, the season is not done in October. The season is not done in November or December. The season gets done in February with whoever wins the Super Bowl, and 31 other teams are not going to be Super Bowl champions. So for those Cowboys fans that think that, oh, well, we can't win the division, Philadelphia's got a kickwalk schedule, I'm just telling you, let's just take it a week at a time, number one, and number two, who cares? You know, at the end of the day, if they win the division, so be it. But if you have a team at 13-4, and four, let's say they just finished 13 or I don't know, whatever. And they get the first seed at 13 and 4, but you finished 11 and 6 or 12 and 5 right behind them. It doesn't matter because there's only one bye week in the entire, you know, the entire year. And, you know, I've seen teams like, what was it? I've seen the Saints go 13 and 3 and lose in the first round because of the fact of, um, the, you know, of how things went that year. I've seen, you know, other crazy shit i mean just last year you had nearly all the home playoff teams from the divisional round get knocked out so it's not like you have two bye weeks that like you can think you can hit there's only one bye week and it looks like whoever wins the nfc east or maybe minnesota will have that that that's a strong possibility i mean who knows so i don't want to get everybody's head down or rather <laughs> i don't want people to have their head down there's still plenty of football left. And on top of that, guys, if we were 4-2 even with Dak Prescott and the season went the way it did, and, you know, of course we might be a little bit more upset given certain circumstances, but I wouldn't be upset with that. I think that anybody with a 4-2 and two spart, uh, spart, four and two start would be absolutely ecstatic at that. They are doing better than what I anticipated. I think that that's what matters there, number one. But number two, there's still plenty of season left, and for all we know, the Cowboys could get, um, can consistently continue doing their thing, and then at the end of the day, you go to that December game with Philadelphia, and that could be for the division title, and that's the one that matters. That is at home. People are forgetting the Giants game. We have a Giants game at home on Thanksgiving, which, you know, we haven't played well on Thanksgiving so far. I think we've, we haven't won on Thanksgiving under McCarthy, so I'm hoping that changes. But yeah, I, I don't want I don't want to leave us on a sour note. That's a good note. Still plenty of season to go, guys. We got Detroit on deck. Let's see where we get there. I think, um, and because we've gone the long streak, and I don't think uh, I'm gonna keep picking. I think that Dallas will take care of business. I um, I will say though, it's gonna be closer than people think. I think Dallas wins. Let's go a score of 27 to 23. I think that Dallas takes care of business. Um, just enough to get back past Detroit. Um, and you know, let's just see what happens there. But, um, I've seen some, uh, 
content creators over in the Philadelphia space of things try to pump up Detroit to say, oh, they can upset the Cowboys, which I do believe. But if you think that they are a team that's worthy of that and think they're good to do that, then if if Detroit gets beaten, what are we going to say? Are we going to just say the Detroit Lions are nothing? So, again, I, I'm not discounting what Philadelphia has done. Congratulations, they're 6-0. and But I think that was funny, and they keep going on about it. So, uh, a couple other things to touch about because I haven't had a chance to actually do a video on that. So, once again, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this um, preview of the Detroit game. I'll probably do a video on Thursday about the um, the playoff picture. I usually like doing snapshots of these um, once we get halfway through October as we are now because um, now that you're kind of getting into the quarter, not even the halfway point, but now that you're kind of getting into like the 33 to 40% done the season territory, we want to get a snapshot and then kind of monitor that as we go through. And we'll probably be doing that. I'll probably do videos on that every um, two weeks because the NFL changes. So I don't mean to go on and on and on, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Goodbye.